Well, hello, and welcome to another Lipedema Light Bite. I'm Cheryl Skolich, Lipedema Diva, along with Kelly Maynard of Wild Heart Wellness. And we're here today to talk to you about some conservative therapy myths. So just wanted to say welcome and thank you so much for joining. Introduced us a little bit. Kelly, do you wanna add anything in there? Your email address and yeah, I'm excited. We've been trying to touch base for a little while now, so I'm glad we got to. And I'm a health and wellness coach, been working on Cheryl's awesome group. She lets me pretend I'm in charge of some things on there. So please look at our information at the end of the video. There'll be a screen where you can freeze it, take down all that information and find um, Wild Heart Wellness and our food sensitivities group for lipedema. Excellent. All right. So we wanted to cover a little bit about uh, conservative therapy myths because our previous presentations, um, I think we had three, um, talked about various conservative measures that you can take if you're a woman, woman with lipedema. And so there's a lot of myths out there, tons and tons of conservative therapies. So we wanted to cover some of the myths. And one of the, the first ones is, if you wanna try a conservative therapy, you have to wait for that official diagnosis and doctor's approval. And yeah, really don't, really, honestly. Um, I was just listening to uh, actually a presentation that you did, Kelly, with um, it, Deb um, from Vibration, um, oh gosh, uh, fat disorders. Vibration for fat disorders. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, don't spend that thousand dollars to go to a doctor to get a, a official diagnosis when you know you have lipedema. Take a look at our group in particular, because um, our food sensitivities group, we have over 300 posts organized into learning guides on Facebook. Now they call them guides. Um, used to be units, but whatever. Um, but we have a, a section in there on how to tell if you have lipedema or not. So if you think you have lipedema, go ahead and start trying some of those therapies um, because it's kind of a myth that you have to wait for that official diagnosis because these therapies are going to work for you whether you have lipedema or if you don't. Um, and if you have any inkling that you think you do, might as well start working toward fixing it, right? Yeah, that's true. These are not therapies that are going to be invasive or introduce anything that's going to progress your lipedema faster than it would have progressed anyway. So it's kind of along the lines of what I talked to Debbie about yesterday. It's like, maybe you have lipedema and maybe you don't, but some women spend a very long time trying to find a doctor who even has ever heard of lipedema. So if you really want that diagnosis for whatever reason, and there are, you know, some women really need that diagnosis and some women don't really care. Um, but even if you want one and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting, there are so many things you can do. So I would say go watch our previous videos and find out all you can about all those conservative therapies and it won't hurt you to try some of those. Exactly. While you're waiting. Exactly. And also, you know, it, when you do get the diagnosis, it your doctor may not be giving you a therapy plan anyway. So, you know, it, a lot of these therapies are kind of up to you and what works for your lifestyle, which we're going to be getting to in a little bit anyway. Um, so um, it, it, for me, when I went to get my diagnosis, it was because specifically mm -hmm. I was trying to get into a specific clinical trial. And so I had to have that official diagnosis. But for six, eight months before that, I knew I had lipedema and, you know, I, I was already working toward trying to fix some things. Um, but what you do want to do, you do want to do a lot of research because uh, there's a lot of potential underlying um, reasons that you have lipedema. And so one therapy might work for you and not for someone else. So you want to try to see what therapies are out there that might help you and where you currently are in your lipedema journey. That's true. And you and I have talked to women that we thought knew a whole lot. And we will mention a therapy that we use that we thought everyone knew about. And they say, what is that? I've never heard of that before. So 
if you don't do a lot of research, you're probably missing something. Even women who do a lot of research, you, you know, you, one study links to the next and to the next and to the next. And so depending on which trail you went down, you might have missed something. So yes, research, research, research is your friend. So do a lot of research. And while you're doing that research, be aware that for some therapies, there are contraindications. If you tend to bruise really easily, if you have a history of um, some different conditions that might be, you know, it just make you on alert for being more cautious with some of the therapies. Um, doctors, even if you go to a doctor, they are not gonna know to see if you have a thyroid condition or see if you have hypermobility or a lot of the other comorbidities. So even if you have those things, you're still gonna have to go and look it up yourself and figure out if certain therapies will work for you. It's so true because you alone know your body. Your doctor's not gonna know your body inside and out. You know, they're you're going to think that they do right but no yeah they don't you, you know what is going on with you more than anyone else out there you know your personal limitations you know you know if you're going to be able to bounce on a rebounder for 45 minutes or if you need to just sit in a chair and have one of the little under the chair uh bouncy uh rebounders and just do five minutes you know trying to get your your feet up and down it, you know that so much better than a, a doctor. So think about what you enjoy, what will fit into your lifestyle um, and, and go for it because all of these therapies out there, they are going to improve at least that little bit, something in your life, all right? Okay, myth number two, if another woman with lipedema has no success with a particular conservative therapy, then it's not worth your effort. Um, well, this really isn't true because again, none of us are on the same journey. Um, there's many potential underlying issues with lipedema. Um, and just to run down, you know, trying to do it kind of quickly, but it, it could be that your lymph nodes are having an issue. It could be that the lymph vessel is twisty. It could be that the lymph vessel is leaking. It could be that the lymph vessel has valves that aren't shutting all the way. It could be that your veins are leaking. So there's all of these different possibilities. It could be that your lymph fluid is so thick that the lymph system is having trouble pulling it out of those interstitial spaces. So, you know, it, and it's possible that you have an understanding of your body and maybe where it's at, what has kind of worked for you in the past and maybe what hasn't. You know, if, if you've noticed that your legs feel wonderful after doing some foot pumps, then maybe look at additional things that do foot pump type things, rebounding and walking and, and things like that. If your feet or uh, legs are really, really painful after doing a couple of foot pumps, then maybe you need to look at something else. And, and just gauge where you are and what might be working for you. That's right. Um, we hear that so often that people will dismiss things just because another person that they heard about or read about didn't have success. But um, the one of the things that's on here is you can't know exactly what that person did. So you can't judge whether what they report that they did will work for you. They're not gonna give like a detailed step-by-step -step process of exactly the, the thing that they did. So they may say, well, swimming helps me. Well, what does swimming mean? Did they swim laps? Did they just sit in the pool and not move? Did they do a few flutter kicks? Did they, you know, did they do 25 laps? We don't know. Are they swimming slow, fast? I mean, there's so many kind of different components to every single therapy. And so swimming was just an example because we all know that water therapy is good for lipedema, but with any therapy you look at, that woman did an exact thing that works for her. And unless you know that exact thing, you can't really dismiss the overall therapy and say it won't work for you a variation on that therapy may be the perfect thing for you. So 
um, I think it's important to realize we are all unique and each therapy is unique. Even if it seems like it's the same therapy, it's still being used by that person in a very specific way. Very true. Myth number three, the more therapies you can do, the better. And in, in some respects, this is true, right? And right. I think we're, we'll be talking about, you know, trying to do multiple things at the same time. But sometimes your body just needs a rest. You know, there are some therapies out there that can be done daily, like MLD and compression. You want to maybe wear your compression every single day, right? Um, but some of the deep tissue deep tissue therapies may respond better if you give your body a rest because you're going to be releasing those toxins into your system into your lymph fluid so you're going to need to want to give your your liver and your kidneys a, a rest um, so you're not overwhelming your whole system um, if you're bruising a lot or if something ends up being painful you're going to want to rest and heal Sometimes taking a nap is one of the best things to do for you. I 100% agree with napping. Very <laughs> good therapy, very good for, for your body. But I mean, truly, we all wish we could take a nap every day, but our bodies are carrying a lot of stuff. And so resting is important. Um, not every therapy is best for every single body. And there's not some kind of magic combination of therapies that work for every single person with lipedema. And, you know, the, the magic number of therapies is not however many I can cram into a day. That's the best amount. That's, that's not true. Sometimes a very simple one or two therapies will work for you. And for me, I find that if I use one or two therapies and then in a few months, I'll switch to a, one or two other therapies. Um, that seems to help my body adjust and make changes and stay, you know, it stays in a place where there's less pain and more mobility. It almost seems like my body kind of gets used to what I'm doing and then it doesn't respond as well. So the taking on that, it's almost like a job. If you're doing 10 hours of therapy a day, that's a job. And so maybe rethink what is working best for me and maybe just try to give yourself a break and you don't have to do all the therapies all the time. That's so true. Okay. Uh, myth four, if you try conservative therapy a couple of times and see no results, it's best to stop doing it. Well, a lot of these therapies work over time. And so sometimes you just need to give it some time to start working. Um, uh, I've talked before about um, the uh, cupping therapy that I went to. Uh, there was someone here in town who had a cupping machine and you know he had suggested to me that I go for, I think it was an eight week plan that he had. Um, and so you know the first couple of times I'm going, oh, this isn't, this isn't working, this isn't working. But you know I kind of committed that I'd try it out for that eight weeks. And I'm telling you, amount of difference after those eight weeks was extraordinary. So, you know, some things are going to work faster than others and lipedema tissue, since it's fibrotic, it's going to be very slow in responding. So sometimes you just need to give it a little time. That's true. And we need to remember, we didn't develop all of this lipedema tissue overnight. So we can expect immediate results and our tissue will tend to respond more slowly than tissue that's in a healthy state. And so we need to be patient with ourselves. We can't expect a miracle. And we also can't expect to get the same results as someone else on their exact timeline. Even if that person is at our same stage of lipedema, their legs look just like ours and we've never seen legs that look just like ours before. Well, we don't know what's going on on the inside. And so um, there's all kinds of things that affect how quickly we can respond to treatment. We carry different levels of fluid. We have different levels of fibrosis. Our hormones are different. Our genetics are different. There's all kinds of different things. So we really need to remember that we are unique. Even though we have lipedema, we are unique. And our journey is not someone else's journey. I've said that so many times. 
true. <laughs> and one thing is that so many of these therapies, I warn you, are extremely painful at first. But over time, the pain is going to diminish. Um, and I had just mentioned uh, cupping. That first time that I went and had cupping done, oh, it was so incredibly painful. Um, and the second time when I went back, I had some bruises on my back and uh, the therapist said, I, I didn't realize that this was hurting you that much. It, and I was like, oh yeah. So he turned the machine way, way down. Um, so that's just one thing to realize that um, it, it is gonna be very painful at first, but over time, as that scar tissue starts to break down and uh, uh, kind of uh, work out a little bit, that pain's going to diminish. And I'm frozen, aren't I? That's true. And <laughs> you might be surprised how quickly consistency over time is really a key um, for success with, th with the therapies and also just to diminish that pain. You'll be surprised how much less it hurts if you just get through that first few sessions of some of the deep tissue therapies. Myth five, truly effective conservative therapy for lipedema is expensive and time consuming. And it is true, some of it is extremely expensive and time consuming but there's so many things out there that you can do that are inexpensive. You can do at home. Um, one of the best examples I think that Kelly and I just love are, is the massage gun. Yeah, you know, you do have that hundred dollar investment up front, but you know, it's not a couple thousand, right? Um, right. And I, I know it was very painful for me to think about spending that hundred dollars at the beginning. But one of the great things about the massage gun is you can just pick it up. You don't have to undress and, you know, just five minutes of time. And, you know, it, it's just awesome. And, and there's a lot of other therapies out there as well that can be inexpensive and not as time consuming as some others that are out there. That's true. You are going to have to decide you're going to make an investment in your health if, when you have this condition to keep yourself mobile and to keep your pain levels under control and just to be able to participate in life and have some control over the progression of lipedema. Um, but one thing that helps me, I was talking to Cheryl earlier today, I went to um, an MLD therapist and even with my insurance, because my doc, I'd actually found a doctor who prescribed it. It was $175 for a 15 minutes of therapy. And my prescription said I was supposed to go four to five times a month for at least one hour sessions. Oh my God. So that little massage gun seems real cheap when you, <laughs> when you compare it to what I was going to have to pay. Um, so I would suggest just think through everything and also go investigate some conservative therapies that you can do. There are things you can do for free. You know, you, you can do things for free. We cover these in some of our videos um, that we've done previously. Yep. And whatever time you invest in these therapies, you're going to get back because you're going to get little moments of your life back and things that you've have have had to give up before you were able to do the therapies, you're going to get those back. And so it really is a reward in itself. So very true. Um, one other thing that we were talking about earlier is uh, ways of combining therapies together. Um, so one of the things that I like doing is uh, when uh, doing my Epsom salt bath, doing some foot pumps. And so doing both of those at the same time, sometimes I'll do some gua sha in, in the tub as well. Um, just so I'm able to get a couple things in it at a time. Um, I know our slide says uh, self MLD as well. And so that's a good idea. Actually, right now, while we're doing this video, I have a foot bath going. <laughs> hey, I love doing my um, foot bath. And then I'll have, I have a two part lymph press system. So I'll do my upper body lymph press with my feet in the you know, soaking in the 
mineral water. And um, there's just, if you think about it and get creative, you can overlap some things. You can do your deep breathing at any time. You know, if you're walking outside, you can take some deep cleansing breaths. One of the best things that's overlooked for your lymphatic system, those deep belly breaths. So um, think, take, think about how you can combine some things and it'll, you'll be able to do more than one thing at a time and save yourself some of those hours and hours of self-care. Yep, exactly. Oh, my computer's not wanting to switch. Oh, now it decided to go uh -oh. too fast. All righty. <laughs> oh, uh, no. There we go. All right. We're already up to the conclusions. Yay. So the key to living a full life with your lipedema is taking control of your lipedema. You can do it. Listen to your body because no one else knows your body the way that you do. It, you're going to know um, or have... Well, I, I think it's that therapy that kind of sparks some interest in you and you go, hey, what about this therapy? That sounds kind of cool. It, if it's something that sounds interesting to you and you're going to be able to stick with it, that's one of the best therapies to do because you'll be sticking with it. That's true. If you're not going to do therapy, no matter how great it is, it's not a benefit to you. So yeah. I know women who spend a ton on like a vibration platform and it's under their bed. Yep. So that's, you know, figure out what's going to work in your life with your budget, with your preferences, because you know your body. You can look at other women, find out what they're doing and see what seems right to you, what you would like to do, you know, um, and trust your instincts. We, I think we give up on our instincts a little bit when we have a chronic illness and Doctors have said, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. Go, go back to that place where you trust your instincts and just try to figure out what you would like because it's your journey. It, because these therapies, they do have to fit into our lifestyle. It, you know, you may have to change your routine a little bit, but it's something um, that it, if it's something that fits in with what you're doing day to day, and that's one of the best things that you could possibly do. Um, uh, one of my examples is when I was first starting, um, I got a, a little rebounder and I put it out in our front yard. So when we took our dog Sally out, then I'd be able to jump up and down on the rebounder for a couple minutes because my physical abilities, if you look at our little graph there, physical abilities weren't really there. Um, so, you know, I could only bounce up and down for a little bit. I couldn't do you know, a three mile walk. I, I could only do, you know, it, I think at the beginning, you know, less than a minute on a rebounder. Um, so, um, you know, look at your preferences, your budget, and especially as, as we've been saying, stick with, <laughs> with what you'll be able to stick with over time. Yeah, consistency is the key. Whatever you choose, you can't just do it once. It needs to be part of your lifestyle. And finally, we can't emphasize enough, research, do a lot of research. Research is your friend. So careful, thoughtful research to figure out what's best for you and your unique lipedema journey. Very true. Okay, so for more information, please see my flow page at Lipedema Diva. So that's flow.page slash Lipedema Diva. And our Facebook group for patients is Lipedema and Food Sensitivities. Take control of your lipedema. Both Kelly and I are over there. So feel free to join and say hi to us whenever you feel like. We're always looking to chat. <laughs> we are. Um, my website is wildheart.health. And then I have a Facebook page, Wildheart Wellness for Lipedema. Excellent. Well, I'm so glad that all of you decided to join us today and take a look at what we had to say. Um, make sure you put some comments down below um, and uh, always looking to make connections with you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.